Hey guys, it's Kenny here from Slurve.com, back at it again for my favorite cash game plays for this week's Deutsche Bank Classic, the second leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Before we get into uh, this week, let's take a look back at what happened last week. Uh, my four picks last week for cash games were uh, Henrik Stenson, uh, Phil Mickelson, Patrick Reed, and Russell Knox. First, let's start off with the bad, Henrik Stenson. He withdrew his knee injury from a surgery earlier in the year, fla flared up. He withdrew. It was very, very hurtful. But if you use my other picks and had a, and all five, all the other five of your golfers made the cut, uh, he probably still won some money. So let's go to the good. Uh, Patrick Reed. Uh, he was one of my picks last week. He actually won the tournament, his first victory of the year. Um, you know, after a bunch of top tens and having a pretty consistent season, definitely, uh, basically gave him that Ryder Cup spot standing which you really wanted you know he likes to play the Ryder Cup you know his uh, uh, passion uh, for the Ryder Cup so that definitely threw a little bit um, of motivation his way when it came the last week um, my other two picks uh, Phil Mickelson you know he did his thing he started off a little bit rough uh, but ended up finishing inside the top 15 with a 13th place finish with a good Sunday which is a uh, pretty solid for cash games and a Russell Knox. He made the cut, but he disappointed a bit uh, when it came down to the end. He finished uh, tied for 60th. And, you know, it almost probably cost him a Ryder Cup bid if he threw another top five in there after his victory at the Travelers a couple weeks before. It could have made uh, the decision for Darren Clark even more difficult. But Darren Clark went with uh, Thomas Peters um, and gave Russell Knox the boot. So... You know, Russell Knox, another guy to take a look at, has motivation this week. He said he's going to be focusing hard on winning this FedEx Cup playoffs. Uh, he's not one of my picks this week, but I definitely don't hate him in cash games. So, let's go take a look at the course this week. It's going to be um, the Deutsche Bank Classic played at TPC Boston. It's the easiest course by far during the four FedEx Cup playoff events. The fairways are wide, the rough is light. There's not that much water, only a few holes. The greens aren't particularly small and there's not too much undulation overall on the putting surfaces as well the stats that I'm looking for this week are going to be strokes gain T to green par 5 scoring birdie or better percentage strokes gain approach scoring average and I'll take a little peek at driving distance as well now let's get on to this week's picks uh, for my high-end pick I'm gonna go Adam Scott at ten thousand four hundred dollars I definitely don't mind Jason Day once again this week in cash, and I'm pretty sure one of my two cash lineups will have Day in it. But for my picks this week, I'm going to start with Adam Scott. So the Deutsche Bank Classic has been at TPC Boston since 2003, but there was a little bit of a course redesign in 2007. So there's a lot of info and trends we can spot at this tourney, at this tournament, unlike you know past weeks. Uh, let's delve into some of these stats and trends and compare them to Adam Scott uh, this week. First off, six of the last nine winners here um, since the course redesign in 07 were inside the top three in strokes gained tee to green for the year they won. Adam Scott this year is first in strokes gained tee to green. Every winner here since 2007 was inside the top 22 in par 5 scoring. Adam Scott is 12th in par 5 scoring this year. Six of the last nine winners were inside the top 13 in birdie or better percentage. Scott, Adam Scott is 10th this year. Six of the last nine winners were inside the top 16 in strokes gained approach. Adam Scott is first in strokes gained approach this year. La and finally, the last six winners were inside the top 25 in scoring average. Adam Scott is 5th. So basically, when it comes down to looking at the winners and the trends that the winners had, Adam Scott fits the bill for every single stat that I'm looking for. Now, we can't rely just on stats alone. So let's take a look at his course history and his uh, current form. Of course, uh, current form, uh, course history-wise, Scott has four top 16 finishes here in his last five tries, including two top eights. Now, when it comes to current form, he has four top 18 finishes on tour in his last five events. So if you don't want to pay up for Scott, uh, for Jason Day, Adam Scott makes a good starting point in your cash lineups this week. 
Next up, let's go to Bubba Watson at $8,900. Now, with this being a smaller field event with a cut of only about 25 golfers or so, I would say you need to get six of six through in cash, but you can't have like just six cut makers who finish like 40th, 50th, 60th, uh, you know, or you're going to miss out. You, you need to have some guys with upside on your team and even though, and maybe take a little bit more risk. Now, even though I don't think Bubba's a risky pick, you know, he's made all of his cuts this year, I do think he has upside potential because it is Bubba. He's got that solid game. He's got the length. He makes a ton of birdies. So, um, yeah, I like him this week at, some, at a somewhat deflated price. You know, stat-wise, like Adam Scott, he is a monster. He's sixth in strokes game, tee to green. 16th in birdie or better percentage. Fourth in par five, scoring fourth in driving distance. 23rd in scoring average and 24th in strokes gained approach. Now, he doesn't have a sparkling course history here, but he has made seven of his last nine cuts at TBC Boston. I'm going to overlook the, the finishes just for those years, just because, you know, I'm playing the Ryder Cup captain's pick narrative for him and a lot of my other picks this week. Uh, if you don't know, the you know, the, the eight uh, Ryder Cup uh, guaranteed spots have been filled. Now there's four captain's picks left. Uh, Bubba's on the outside looking in. He loves to play the Ryder Cup, and there are hints that he might not be a captain's pick. Uh, yet, a good showing this week can go a long way into persuading Davis Love to pick him, and he knows this. Next up, it's going to be Jim Furyk at $8,800. Furyk's stats aren't that great, you know, because he missed the first part of the season and he was dealing with an injury and it took him a little while to get back in the form, but he's definitely in form now. He's another golfer vying for a Ryder Cup captain's pick, and that's definitely, once again, a theme with my picks this week. Even though all signs point to him probably making the team, he needs a strong showing to lock up that spot. This course is a great place for him to get that strong showing since Furyk has had a lot of success at TPC Boston. He hasn't missed a cut here since the course redesign in 2007 and he's played every year since then. He has six top 25s, five top 15s, and four top 10s in that nine year span. Even though he doesn't hit it long, uh, his precise iron game and familiarity with the course should be helpful. And also, I think his label as a par-making grinder can be thrown out the window with his recent 58 and his solid birdie-making the last couple of months on tour. Uh, my final pick. It's going to be an uh, old reliable. It's Matt Kuchar at $8,400. He's also on the outside looking in for the Ryder Cup and wants to make this team badly. Now, this pressure to make the team could go badly for some younger players as we saw last week with Russell Knox he you know a good showing by him last week and he probably makes the team but he is a younger guy the thing about Bubba Kuchar uh, Bubba Furk and Kuchar is they are proven vets who have dealt with this pressure in the past and have thrived on it so I think that they will play up to the pressure this week not down like Knox now I faded Kuchar last week and it was a pretty solid play I think he finished 60th or below and I faded him because he was playing a tough major-like course. And he struggled at majors and tough courses uh, like Beth Page Black last week, uh, recently, this year. Now, TPC Boston is definitely not a major-like course. In Cooch's last, it's pretty easy, actually. In, you know, the average score ranges from minus 15 all the way up to minus 22. Those have been the winning scores the last nine years. So it's definitely a birdie fest, and it's not that difficult of a course for these pros. Uh, in Cooch's last 10 starts on courses that have never hosted a major, he's not missed a cut and has nine top 20s and eight top 10s in those 10 starts. Um, that's borderline crazy. Uh, I mean, so... Definitely like him on these easy courses. He also had success at TPC Boston in the past, making his last seven cuts here with four top 15s and two top 10s in that span. He's solid in all my key stats this week except driving distance, but as you can see with his course history, his lack of length shouldn't be too big of a problem. So once again, my picks this week are going to be Adam Scott at 10,400, Bubba Watson at 8,900, Jim Furyk at 8,800, and Matt Kuchar at 8,400. Now, again, like last week, 
this may seem very top heavy but if you use all four of these guys in your cash lineup it still leaves you with about 13 it still leaves you with thirteen thousand five hundred dollars left on your salary cap now you can still afford another low-end 7k guy like charlie hoffman who i like and pair him with maybe a webb simpson or you can even go you know russell knox with uh jason kokrak so there's definitely combos you can even go even riskier because i like jason duffner a lot this week for cash games and so you can go duffner and a minimum price guy like maybe hudson swafford who's made 11 straight cuts in a row on tour or Sung Kang, who's playing some of his best golf um, of the year with nine of his last 12 rounds under par. So, good luck to you guys this week. Once again, make sure you check out my stuff on uh, projectroto.com. Uh, my article is up to read. It is free to view for everyone. There, keep an eye on that site and the Twitter feed for Project Roto because there will be early bird specials for season-long subscription passes to golf... Um, info with uh, David Frey, Jabberwock, his cheat sheets, the Musonomics uh, spreadsheet, which I think is the best and definitely worth the year-long subscription just for that. So keep an eye on that. Also, check out the other guys on Slurve.com and all their work as well. All right, I'll see you guys next week.